Welcome! Today we are going to learn the solving problems is fun. We will first generate ideas for solutions. Then we select the best ideas. The ideas will be prototyped and tested to see if they actually work. The starting point is the problem that you have defined, the parties that are involved, the quantified consequences when the problem is not solved and the design criteria for a successful solution. But we leave the problem for what it is for now and focus on possible solutions. You're probably not the first one trying to solve this problem and you won't be the last one either. So it's always a good idea to see how others have dealt with similar problems. Check which solutions worked and which didn't. Even if there are lots of solutions available, you should always see whether the problem is actually solved. If the problem is not solved, there's always room for another solution. When it seems that no one else has addressed the problem that you're trying to solve, you should probably be worried. Chances are you are not dealing with an actual problem. To be inspired, you can check out your innovative heroes. Although they are probably solving different problems, their approach to problem solving can inspire you. Write your conditions for a successful solution on a big piece of paper and stick it to the wall. In brainstorming, there are no buts and ifs. Only ends. When someone comes up with an idea, you don't say no, or but, or if, you just repeat the idea to acknowledge what has been said. You can ask some clarifying questions. Then you build on the idea by saying yes and, then something follows. Write down all the ideas on a piece of paper and stick them to the wall. You can look at design criteria and see whether you can come up with ideas for the separate design criteria. When you have enough ideas, you group them by nature of the idea. Group them in a way that makes sense. After you have made your list of ideas, you check them against the design criteria and see which ideas cost best on which criteria. Finally, you pick the ideas you want to go with first. Usually, these ideas go well against your design criteria, but they should also be inspiring to you. When in the test phase the idea seems to fail, go back to your list and pick the next best ideas. After you have made your list of ideas, you check them against the design criteria and see which idea scores best on which criterion. You list your ideas on the left side of the matrix and you list your criteria for success at the top of the matrix. Not all criteria for success are equally important, so you need to give them a weight. The most important criteria get the highest weight. You score each criterion for every idea. If an idea scores well on a specific criterion, you give it a high score. Multiply the scores by the weight and add them up. The best ideas should score the highest. Finally, you pick the ideas you want to go with first. Usually, these ideas score well against your design criteria, but they should also be inspiring to you. When in the test phase the idea seems to fail, go back to your list and pick the next best idea. When you have chosen the solution you want to go with, it's time for you to create something your customers can relate to. A prototype can have any form or shape, as long as it creates a real user experience. The user should be able to experience the most essential components of your solution. You can find lots of ideas on YouTube on how to make prototypes. Apart from making an actual working model, you can also use wire models, drawings, animations, website, flyers or something like a pitch. I like to use presentation software like PowerPoint or Google Sheets to create experiences. It works like a charm. Basically, you make a prototype to test your assumptions. When you picked your favorite idea, you thought it was the best idea. But why did you think that? Make a list of your arguments and you have the list of assumptions that you need to test. Use the prototype to test those assumptions. When testing assumptions, you need to ask yourself, what do I want to measure? How do I want to measure it? When I am measuring, am I actually measuring what I want to measure? Will the results of my research be representative, reliable and valid? It is real research. It's better to measure actions than intentions. For instance, if you want to test whether customers will pay 20 euros for your product, you can show your prototype and ask them whether they want to buy your product for 20 euros when it is finished, or you can show them the prototype and ask, wanna buy? 20 euros, 
pay right now. If they say yes and commit to paying 20 euros, you have actually measured a purchase action. When your users have no experience with you or your solution and they need to respond to a hypothetical situation, it's very hard to ask questions that generate a reliable answer. So, now you know how to solve problems like a pro. I wish you good luck in finding an internship and I hope you have a good time. Maybe you can apply your newly acquired problem solving skills. If not in this internship, you will surely apply them in your next internship. Greetings from Niels.